You guys will see in the bottom right hand corner the page numbers that refers to the manual that I was using in order to assemble the sawmill trailer. First manual I used was the HM130 Max sawmill manual that allowed me to get these tracks laid out along with the bunks. And then after that I went over to the Woodlander trailer manual for the rest of the assembly. I chose to assemble my Woodlander sawmill trailer on my old sawmill deck where you see right here. That way I know it's nice and flat and level already. I also went ahead and got my impact driver all charged up. I got the list of tools that's suggested in the manual laid out and that's what I have in the buckets off to my side here. Although I follow the owner's manual very closely, just keep in mind there are the odd time when I did things just a little bit differently and this is one of those cases. In the manual it talks about assembling the middle bunk first. You'll notice I actually assembled from the end first. Going back I probably would have put the middle one in first as the manual said. I just uh, mis uh, misread that when I did it. At this point I switched over to the Woodlander trailer manual and what I'm doing is adding in the end gussets. One of the reasons I left things loose is the other manual suggested is so I can easily undo it, put the end gussets on and then put the, put the nut back on. With the tape measure I'm making sure from the outside to the outside of the tracks it's 37 inches which is what it calls for for an HM130 Max. I'm also making sure that the outside edge of the track is flush with the gussets on both sides. Once that's in check then I'm going ahead and tightening everything. I'm using the clamp here to span the gap between both sides of the track and that just keeps both pieces of track flush with each other as I then go ahead and tighten them up. On page 10 of the Woodlander Trailer Owner's Manual it talks about putting the track assembly on top of the steel crate that the trailer came in. But instead of doing that, what I'm doing here is I took my old sawmill bed and I put the track assembly on top of that because I know it's nice and flat and level.
page 15 of the owner's manual, there's a little discussion where you have to include an offset between the top of the track rail and the top of the side plate. I didn't film myself doing that, but you will want to check that out before you go ahead and do what I'm about to do, where I start to tighten up the bolts on the actual side plates. Although I'm using an impact driver here in the next few moments, I did go back and use a torque wrench as it specifies in the owner's manual. The trailer came with shim plates you can put in place right around this step if you need to level the axles. I didn't need to level them and so you'll notice I don't have any shim plates in place.
This hitch coupler actually gets installed slightly differently whether you're using the North American version or the European version of this trailer. The North American version ends up using bolts which go through the side like I'm doing. The European version according to the manual uses bolts which go down through those top two holes on the hitch coupler.
The next step on page 33 in the owner's manual says to put the sawmill head on top of the trailer and then to install some head lockdown plates. I've skipped over that step for now because I don't have the sawmill assembled. So I'm on to page 36 where I'm installing the wheels. All right guys, that's it. So I've gone ahead and assembled everything for the Woodlander trailer here. My HM130 Max will sit on this, but I've yet to assemble that. So that's what's coming up next. If you wanted to see this video and fast forward, make sure you go back and check out the playlist where there's all kinds of stuff dealing with this brand new to me HM130 Max and Woodlander trailer combo. Thanks for watching. See you next time.